as I promised you yesterday, and as you've been told by KMJ and Isidwa. So we do remember everything that happened at the African Games, and we do remember how Ghana leaped back into the top 10 to finish in sixth place, courtesy some medals that were won, mostly by arm wrestling, and then some from track and field, and then some from boxing as well. Today, we're throwing focus on one of these uh, potential world beaters who won a gold medal during the Games. Now, he is fired up and is looking forward to building up from this very big, remarkable story of winning gold. Who am I talking about? The flyweight gold-winning boxer from Ghana, Mohamed Aiti. He's my guest today on the show. Mohamed, good to see you and congratulations once again. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I've, I've, I've realized that like you've been, you know, you've received the congratulatory messages like over and over again since that time. Huh? <laughs> it must feel good. All right. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty for this great mm. opportunity. And secondly, I would like to say big thanks to my manager, Ni Odate Ivan, CEO of Women Based Boxing Promotions. I would like to say big thanks to my, my club coach, Zico, uh, Zico Man, uh, who, who has also been with me since I started. And I also say big thanks to the national head coach, Dr. Ofori Asari, and all assistant coaches who joined us for this great, wonderful journey. I'd like to say big thanks to all my fans around the global for watching me live on Joy Prime. Oh, great, great, great stuff, great stuff. You know, normally you hear all of this at the end, but we decided to bring it to the front, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, um, you talked about your beginning, and I'm sure everybody will be wondering how it all started for you as a, as a young boxer. All right. Uh, I started boxing at the age of five years. Five and, years? Yes. Wow. And what motivates me... Uh, a lot for me to put my focus on the game is when I get opportunity to participate in a, a Magdan Fest competition in Northern Region, and uh, I was also part of the part of the team for that co uh, competitions, and I won the best boxer for that. Oh, night. I remember very well. Yeah. yeah, this was in Tamale, right? Yeah. It okay. Was, yeah. Uh, so the Magdan Amateur Boxing Challenge um, in the uh, Northern Regional Capital, and um, you know we do remember. Uh, two persons who were very much involved in this are no more and uh, would like to say may their souls rest in peace. So that's me in there in the middle. Uh, and uh, where were you in this picture? <laughs> All right, so I was at, <laughs> at the, the back. back. Yeah. yeah, so um, uh, Nick Pakpo Alute Kofi, who's in all white, close to Dr. Daniel Macaulay, uh, is no more. He passed on some years ago and he was a fulcrum and a very big pillar in rolling out this particular um, you know, a concept. So we went all the way to Tamale. Um, how, tell me about the experience. I mean, going back uh, to a place you call home. All right. So um, since this tournament, when we all came, I didn't plan to have the best boxer on that night. But I have a focus that uh, I'll surely, I'll surely get a gold medal on that on that tournament. And I did my best, and I won a gold medal. And during that time. Uh, after the after the fight, they were having a, a, a medal presentations and awards given. I was at the back, and when I heard my name, Mohamed Haiti, as one the overall best boxer of this tournament, and it was so great grateful to me. And I came to receive that uh, prize from Magdan, and that inspired me a lot. And it, it, it's a very memorable day for me, and I can't forget it. And since then, when I came back home, I feel so. Amazing that I have to put more, much focus on this work that when I put it to myself, I can surely get to somewhere. And it got to a time in uh, 2017, I, I got an opportunity to join the Black Bombers, the national boxing team. I joined Black Bombers and I was very young by then, so they couldn't give me a chance to participate for international amateur boxing competition. So I decided to turn pro. I talked to my manager that I, I have I have a feeling that I can do it as a young professional boxer in Ghana and, and also in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I turned pro at the age of 17 years and I became a, a, a national flyweight champion. Mm -hmm. At the age of 18 years, I became a national champion. And by then, I got so, uh, so many international fights that I participate outside Ghana. I got my first fight with the Philippines. I got it draw in Arizona, USA, and second fight to, I got it at New York, and it was a majority decision against me. That didn't, uh, I, I, 
It didn't deter you? Yeah, it didn't deter me. So I just put much focus in it, and I got opportunity to be part of the, the boxing team to participate for the All-African Games. And my promise to the team that I'll surely had up all my experience and my exposure to give Ghana a gold medal. And we went for a, a long time camping and all those stuff. So, and I, my prayers is to get to this journey. I'll finally get to my journey by God on my side. I'll, I'll get to my destination. And I came out with a gold medal and I'm so grateful to God. Uh, God has made me as a gold medalist. So uh, I would like to thank Magdan also uh, through that tournament also inspired me a lot and all the official members that came together to make this happen. Wow, interesting stuff there. So uh, these pictures that you see are from uh, way back. Uh, this was how many years ago? Um, six to <laughs> five years, yeah, it might be. I've, <laughs> lost, a long, long time. I've lost touch with the time. Uh, this was in 2018, I, I suppose. Yes, this was yeah, in 2018. Yeah, of course. Yes. So uh, this picture we see is, um, you know, from 2018. So Dr. Nadio Macaulay, the executive yeah. chairman of the Magdan Group, who's also uh, the founder of the Magdan Foundation. Uh, so this is the uh, Magdan Amateur Boxing, um, you know, challenge. And so this brought a whole lot of young boxers from, from Accra to Tamale. We also got some boxers from the metropolis. And... Um, you know, how, how did the experience, uh, what, what did it do to you in terms of what you think we should do for other places in, in the country? Um, I'm talking about, because you saw some of your colleagues from, from Tamale and how uh, relatively unskilled they were in the sport. What do you think we should do for, for the other places in the country where we have talents? All right, this picture has meant a lot to us and most of our, our friends that, and our colleagues that we start with some of them have stopped boxing due to um, financial problems and stuff. Some of them too are still in the game and I think uh, we need a lot of support. Uh, we all come from Jamestown and it's not that really easy for us. Um, we are putting ourselves, we are trying all our possible best that we could get to somewhere. But as, as we are all doing it and we don't get a lot of support, you know, there are so many people that stopped on the way but we, we just have the focus that uh, when the going gets tough, the tough must get going. So we just put um, our, our aim and our determination and everything in it, and we, we hope to get somewhere. Mm, I see. So there's a lot in terms of support that you guys need. Yes. Tell me about the infrastructure that is around generally. I mean, the gyms and how well equipped they are. I mean, you have been out there in the U.S. You've had the opportunity to go and fight outside in the U.S. You look at what's happening there. What would you want to see change here in our system? All right, we have to get a lot of training equipments, and I think training equipments and uh, uh, training equipment is the most important thing because uh, some of our clubs here in Ghana we don't have uh, good training equipment, and also the boxes we we don't have. Um, we are lacking the financial support, to, for real, because some of us, we, we just close from training and if you don't get what to eat and all those stuff, so th those ones are the most important things that I think we need. And these are some of the things when we get, it really inspires us to put much focus in the game because we don't get it. I see, yeah. I see. Now, um, so for you, for instance, how do you go about it? How do you survive? And do you have like a good support system at home? How do you survive and how, how have you been able to get uh, to this point? Because some of your colleagues are not able to get, uh, are not able to go through because of the problems that you've mentioned. All right, so all of us, we, are, we, we all face one problem. And I think when I started, it was very tough and it was very hard for me. So I just moved on to stay with my coach for a couple of years. I moved home because I still want to I still want to earn something from the game. So I moved, I moved from my mom's and my dad's place and I went to stay with coach for a couple of years and I got a support also from Mr. Edwin. Uh, Mr. Edwin also, it also support me and you know, that also inspired me. So during that time, I also lost my dad. Oh, uh, it's my like, item, it's so rest in perfect peace. I lost my dad and it wasn't that easy for me. So I just, put it in mind that once you've lost your dad, that is a pillar of the family, then you have to put yourself down 
put yourself down in all things so that you can make you can make things happen to cater for the family. So I just put my focus and my aim. I determined to become a world champion. And I'm still on the go. And I know with God on my side, I'll surely get to my destination. Great stuff. Let's talk about the African Games. You got the opportunity to, to, to join the national team. Um, just before we get into the African Games, tell me how, how the opportunity, I mean, the, that whole experience has been so far for you. All right. So it, it, it came to a time that, uh, you know, I have to plead to be joined the team. Oh, which I see. It's not supposed to, be, supposed to be like that, but I have to plead to join the team because um, there, uh, there are so a lot of uh, politics oh. in, so I have to plead. My manager also have to plead, my coach, all of us, we have to plead for me to join the team, which is not supposed to be, to be like that. But uh, I talked to the Federation president and we all did our possible best and they gave me the opportunity to join. My weight category that I'm supposed to take place in the African Games, they let me know that somebody is there. So I have to drop down if I can. And I promise there that I can do it. So, so your original weight is bantam weight? Yeah, it's a flyweight. So fly they, weight. they give me a minimum weight. Okay. So I reduce like three, four kilos down. And it's not easy for me. I did, I push all myself. I break myself down. I, I have to take all LT decisions. I have to push my body to eat mass and all that. And I believe it will worth it. So we went for a camping at um, Cape Coast for one month, two weeks. And I did my best through there. I was trying, I was running day in, day out, midnight. Everybody is asleep and I'm still, I'm still awake training because of the weight. I couldn't. I couldn't eat properly because um, I have to sacrifice myself to do the weight and then participate for the game. And we came to Legon. We, we, we also spent like three weeks before the, the tournament. I'm still on the hydration. I, I, was, I was putting myself down all because of these achievements. And I did my best. I did my best and God also added up to me. Wow. And I, I came wow. out with this. So wow. I'm so grateful. Now, so let's come to the games proper. You got in there, you had to drop to a, a lower category so you could fight. Then you got the opportunity. Tell me about your first fight. Tell me about qualification into the final stages. All right. And the final final. So the first fight I fought with Zambia and um I just have the focus that I've been in so many international competitions professionally, and I have to bring all this um, experience and everything together so that I can make the nation proud. I couldn't get it easy though, but I did my best. For my first fight, it wasn't easy for me because I have to come like a real amateur boxer because people don't believe that I could do what I've done because they know professional boxing is different from the amateur boxing. and. I did my best and I won the fight. And after my first fight, my second fight with a Moroccan, I said I have to change the game plan. No matter how it is, I have to change the game plan. I see. So the second fight, I changed the game plan. I became like a real professional boxer. And my opponent was going back. So I have the, the mindset, once he's going back, then I have to take victory on the night. I, I plan to stop him. but. He also did his best, and I won by 5-0 on that night. And it, it, it's also a great, a great step for me. And when I got to a final, and I, I, I got to a final with a, a Congo. So, a Congolese boxer. A, a Congolese boxer. Oh. And the boxer, too, as he saw me, that I've become so smallish, he also have it, have it in mindset that he can also stop me or do something to me. And... The, uh, the most special advice from the head coach, uh, Coach As Asari, told me before I would ent enter in inside the ring, he told me that, Mohamed, you have been in so many international fights and now you've got the opportunity to fight for final. So you, there's no way these guys can disgrace you yet. You have to do all your possible best to, to, to take it over. And I was yeah. like, yeah, Coach, I'll take it. Because in Namibia, and, and teke, uh, to, uh, teke in Ga means to jump over something yes. or to yeah. jump a hurdle. Yeah. yeah. So because because <laughs> it's like Sanunyo teke, I was like, yeah, coach, man teke. And this was just before you yeah, got into the ring. Yeah. I see. So I was like, coach, Kayo, you mean man teke? So 
I just enter and I have it in mind that no, many is someone take it because many boys she be a fan. They are I'm a fan of me because of Ghana. Oh, you know my disgrace, Muko Muko. My my fan, my fan, my take it. So when I get inside the ring, as the fight started, I just have it at the back of my mind that no, I'm not going back for this guy. When I just start the game, no, I start it started going back. So I said no, I've taken this fight. I see. Because when you started coming forward, then it will be a very tough one for me. But I said, no, I have to let this guy go, go back because uh, I've, I have so, like, I, I've hydrated myself a lot. And because of the weight, I couldn't get it easy. So when he started coming forward and giving me pressure, I wasn't able, able to stand. So that means I have to take, take control over the fight. So when he started going back, I was like, no, Mohamed, I've taken the fight. I see. So I did all the three rounds and I got it by a unanimous decision, 5-0. Tell me about the, you know, the, the atmosphere in the ring, around the ring, in the stands, you know, and what it did to motivate you in addition to what uh, Coach Asari uh, told you. All right, so when the fight started, every, every round, uh, one of our coach also at the, um, at the, uh, at the screen, because they are doing a live screen, live yeah. judging. So we will come to the coaches and tell them that Mohamed is leading. This one you are leading. This one you are losing. So anytime they will come, they, they were like, Mohamed, the first round you've gotten it 5 0. The second round you've gotten it 5 0. So as I won the two rounds, I know that, yes, even if my opponent try, unless he stops me, but if he can't stop me, then I've won this fight. Then I have to push myself. I have to. Then I have to protect my defense also so that I can finish the round peacefully. Then I got the victory on the ninth. So I did my best and the fight ended and I got the victory too on that ninth. Wow, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you very much. Let's, let's wrap up this conversation with what you want to do going forward. Um, there's one more opening for Olympic qualification in Thailand. Is this something you would want to explore? All right, so I'm willing to, to stand for Ghana for the second time at the Afri uh, Olympic qualifiers, and I'm hoping to qualify also with a gold medal and to the Olympic Games also, and to bring gold medal. If they could give me the opportunity, I'm there to do my best. You were also in Italy? Yeah. Were you in Italy? No, well? no, no, I'm you were, part, you were not yeah. in Italy. Okay, good. So, so, so you, you really want that opportunity so you can... Exactly, you can I want the opportunity to prove myself as well to give Ghana an Olympic medal, gold medal as well. Finally, uh, what are you doing between now and when uh, the team is reconstituted? All right, so now I'm still preparing. I'm still preparing and if they could call me a camp, I'm ready to, to do it also for Ghana because not that something that I can't do it, but I've done it before and I can still do it. So I'm still preparing for, for that. If they could give me the opportunity, I'll still show myself at Bancloth, and then I'll, I'll make the uh, route to the Olympic Games and then give Ghana a gold medal as well. Mohamed, thank you so much. Thank it's you been very great. Much. It's been great, uh, you know, having this conversation with you. And uh, we wish you well. And uh, we're hoping that you get the opportunity with the national team again. Sure. And like you said, go prove yourself and win a gold medal. And this Thailand. time around, I'm going to fight for my weight category, a flyweight. And this, this time around, it's not a minimum weight anymore, it's flyweight. So. If they could give me the opportunity, I'll have a lot of energy to do that. Okay, great. <laughs> so it means that we're here for a very big boxing showdown. Uh, I mean, the justifiers for the national team. Again, uh, this is not the political showdown. This is uh, the boxing showdown. So thanks so much for watching. There's still more to come. Uh, we'll be delving into uh, a very big documentary that, um, you know, that has been put together by Kwame Dazi and... It, it focuses on substance abuse uh, by people in the arts and entertainment industry. So it's called Creative, um, you know, Addictions. Uh, creative Addictions. So uh, Kwame Dazi will be here and he'll be responding to the inspiration behind uh, getting to do this and some of the revelations that uh, are, will be made by uh, the final airing or the eventual airing of this documentary will amaze you. Some of the things that uh, creatives go through in trying to satisfy their respective audiences uh, here and every other place they find themselves. So uh, you have to stay with us for that. So congratulations once again to Mohamed Aite. Uh, we bring you the best all the time. He's the best in his category now. He's looking forward to even doing more for Mother Ghana. 
and that's the way to go. More of such conversations uh, this week here on Sport on Prime Morning. So you all stay well. I'll be back tomorrow with another big conversation uh, in sport. And, uh, uh, you know, in the meantime as well, you can just click on the sports page of myjoinline.com for more of uh, these and others. Stay tuned. Uh, Creative Addictions is coming and uh, more here on Prime Morning. My name is Nathaniel Lato and I have love for sport.